Welcome to this edition of Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret, and today we're in Isaiah chapter 47, beginning in verse number 1. Isaiah 47, verse 1. You can study God's Word with me at your pace, at your convenience, any part of the Word of God, any time that you want to, using my audio Bible messages and that's at thebibleversebyverse.com, where you will find four complete series going through every verse of Scripture. This is the fifth with the New Testament completed already. It's all archived again at thebibleversebyverse.com, where all you ever need to bring is your Bible and a hunger for God's Word. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth, your word is truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Psalm, or I should say Isaiah 47, verse 1. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans. For you shall no more be called tender and delicate. The daughter of Babylon refers to the city of Babylon, which was so famous for its great beauty. God warns it. God says, you may be beautiful, but your enemies are going to destroy you. And you're never going to be beautiful again. It's amazing how there have been several world superpowers who became so corrupt morally, they eventually were judged by God. And the great beauty and the great progress that they made in every area of life came crashing down, and none of them ever thought that it would ever happen to them. 2. Take the millstones and grind meal. Uncover your locks. Make bare the leg. Uncover the thigh. Pass over the rivers. Your nakedness shall be uncovered. Yea, your shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance. I will not arbitrate with a man. Babylon is going to suffer the shame that they had brought upon all those nations that they had defeated previously. Verse 4. <clears throat> As for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name, the Holy One of Israel. God is the Redeemer. And he's the one who rescues his people from things which are too difficult for them to save themselves from. Verse 5. Sit in silence and go into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for you shall no more be called the Lady of Kingdoms. Sit thou silent. This is referring to the fact that Babylon will no longer be the superpower. They will not be bossing anyone around anymore. They will be sitting in silence. Verse 6, I was angry with my people. I have profaned my inheritance and given them into your hand. You did show them no mercy. Upon the aged have you very heavily laid your yoke, and you said, I shall be a lady forever, so that you did not lay these things to your heart, neither did remember the latter end of them. And God used Babylon to punish his sinful people. But Babylon just went too far. They enjoyed it way too much, you see. Babylon was extremely cruel, and they enjoyed every second of it. They reveled in it, and as a result, God is going to give Babylon some of their own medicine. In other words, Babylon will have people that will be extremely cruel to them also. Verse 8, Therefore hear now this, you that are given pleasures, given to pleasures, that dwell securely, that say in your heart, I am, and there is none else beside me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. Everything, I, everything's great. Everything will always be great for us here in Babylon. Babylon was wealthy. They had it made. Babylon was the big power in the world. They didn't think that it would ever change. Nine, but these two things 
shall come to you in a moment, in one day, the loss of children and widowhood. They shall come upon you in their fullness for the multitude of your sorceries and for the great abundance of your enchantments. Boy, it just... I don't know what it's like where you're listening, but this sure sounds an awful lot like modern America. Babylon's going to suffer for practicing the cult, the occult, which is an abomination to the Lord. I'm telling you, it's all over the place. Eastern mysticism. I, I listened to a sports, a sports talk show of all things the other day, and I've heard this more than once recently. And they'll say something, the host will say something, oh, I didn't mean to speak that to the universe. I didn't, I didn't mean to speak that to the universe so that it'll come to pass. I think to myself, what? When I was five years old, we didn't believe in that nonsense. But that's because we were a Judeo-Christian nation, at least in our ethics for the most part. Now, United States, I don't know. United States is going down the wrong road and is down the wrong road. And the sad thing and the dangerous thing, they don't even see it. They think it's normal. You can't get through to a people like that. Not without a lot of suffering. And then it's too late. They'll go, we'll go right down the same road as Babylon. We're headed down that road right now. The same road as Sodom and Gomorrah for the same reason that they were destroyed. You take an entire month and you devote it to being proud and showcasing even the churches being so very proud of the sin that God destroyed two cities for. And then you add the occult and you add everything else. You say, Moret, who's to blame? I know it's the Democrats, it's the Republicans. No, it's the so-called Bible-believing preachers who long ago quit preaching the pure word of God and decided they wanted to be cool. They are to blame. It's not up to the politician to turn a nation to God. It's up to the preachers to preach the pure word of God and take a whole lot of heat for doing it if need be. But that's who it's up to. That's their job. And they haven't done it for decades for the most part. And that's why we are the way we are. It's the preachers. And that's nothing new either. It's always been that way. The downfall of any great society has begun with preachers being unfaithful to the Word of God, watering down the Word of God, not preaching the Word of God. It was the downfall of Israel, downfall of every society. That's where it starts. Verse 10. For you have trusted in your wickedness. You have said, none sees me. It's no big deal. You see, you hear that same thing all the time today. It's no big deal. Oh, you're going to take a stand and you're going to call what I do sin? You're going to call what I promote sin? Huh. You, ought to be, you ought to be put in jail. You certainly ought to be shut up permanently. People in Israel, people in Babylon, they were saying the same thing. Huh, no one sees me. God says, your wisdom and your knowledge, it has perverted you. And you have said in your heart, I am and there is none else beside me. They were not as smart as they thought they were. They thought that they could control their own destiny. And they thought that they could sin and it wouldn't be held accountable for God or to God for doing it. In fact, they long. I'll go ahead and quit calling sin, sin, just like modern evangelicals have quit calling sin, sin for a long, long time now. And if the so-called Bible believers don't call sin, sin, no wonder the country is headed toward ruin at breakneck speed. 11. Therefore shall evil come upon you. You shall not know from where it rises, and mischief shall fall upon you. 
You shall not be able to put it off, and desolation shall come upon you suddenly, which you shall not know. God says that they're going to be surprised when suddenly they are attacked and destroyed. Never thought it would happen. Not to them. We're different. Hmm, sure. Twelve, stand now with your enchantments and with the multitude of your sorceries in which you have labored from your youth. Perhaps you shall be able to profit. Perhaps you may prevail. Hey, yeah, there's an idea. The nation is crumbling. Hey, hey, word of faith, liars. Start naming and claiming victory. Start naming and claiming prosperity. Start naming and cla claiming power and authority, which you've been doing all along. But, but speak to the universe, which is the exact same thing that you're doing. It's witchcraft. It's sorcery. It has nothing to do with Christianity. Why don't you try that for a while, says God. Hmm. That'll turn this nation around. 13. You are wearied in the multitude of your counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators stand up and save you from these things that shall come upon you. The Babylonians listened to advice from the wrong people. They listened to the sorcerers to those who spoke to the universe, to the word of faith liars of their day, to anyone and anything except the one true God, and it got them into trouble, so much trouble, they'll never get out of it because that's who they'll look to. 14, behold, they shall be as stubble. The fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There shall not be a coal to warm at, nor a fire to sit before. In other words, God says they're going to burn and they'll not be able to, not be able to rescue themselves from the, fl from the flames. 15. Thus shall they be unto you with whom you have labored, even your merchants from your youth, they shall wander every one to his quarter. None shall save you. In their time of need, the Babylonians will look to the astrologers for help, but it'll be like looking for water down a dry well. They're going to come up empty. Study all of God's word with me at thebibleversebyverse.com. Choose, click, and listen from four complete series going through the entire Bible verse by verse. And if you'd like to be a part of Scripture verse by verse, pray for me and God's Word when you take a break from studying with me at the Bible, verse by verse dot com, Go to the front page, click the donate button, prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. That also makes you a part of this ministry. Thanks for studying with me. I'll see you next time right here on Scripture verse by verse. Until then, so long.